Hi everyone, it's Steve here from Rostalgia Gaming. If you're new here, Rostalgia is an independent video game studio operating out of Ontario, Canada. Today I'm going to show you a small project that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. It's called the Pi Station. It's a Raspberry Pi 3 board that runs RetroPie with some custom modifications that I've made with the help of Reddit and some other YouTube videos. Let's take this thing apart so I can show you the insides. So this right here is the Raspberry Pi 3. It is the main brain of the Pi Station. It's got a few different ports that I'll show you. It's got a micro USB port right over here. It's got an HDMI out. It's got an AV out which is really handy if you just in case you've got a TV that doesn't have HDMI. Over here, this big box is a LAN port, so you can plug an Ethernet cable directly into it from your modem. And then over here, these two tall boxes are uh, USB uh, jacks. They've actually got four of them total, two in each of the boxes. Uh, some of the major differences between the Raspberry Pi 3 and previous versions is there was a, a decent upgrade to the processor. Uh, it's currently running a 1.2 gigahertz processor versus the previous version at 900 megahertz. Uh, there was an upgrade in the architecture that gives the Raspberry Pi 3 a boost from 32-bit to 64-bit and this will essentially give you better performance. And another big change is that the Raspberry Pi 3 has onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and this is something that no other Raspberry Pi has been able to support without the use of one of those USB dongles. This makes working with the Raspberry Pi much more convenient and a lot easier to use. So this right here is a micro SD card. All of the data for the device is actually stored as an image file on this SD card. I'm currently using a 64 gig card, uh, which is less than half full right now, but depending on your application, you could use any size from as low as two gigabytes to as high as 128 gigabyte cards. It's important to note that not all SD cards are compatible with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, there's a really good compatibility list on elinux.org, which I'll link to in the description. So moving on to the case that I'm using, this here is a 3D printed Raspberry Pi case. I was able to actually find the base file on Thingiverse, but needed to make some small modifications for my application. One of the major changes that I had to do was uh, add a mounting hole, and a couple of the minor ones that I had to do was adjust the logo and the text so that it printed a little bit more sharp and clearly. Uh, the power button itself is a really simple momentary push button. When it's connected to the Pi and if it's pushed, it'll essentially just bridge two of the pins. And what I've uh, programmed uh, and customized my software to do is to run a shutdown script. It's not a necessity, but it is much more convenient than have, having no button at all. Uh, powering down a Raspberry Pi incorrectly can actually corrupt your SD card uh, and the button actually prevents that from happening. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're doing in the Raspberry Pi, if you press that button, it'll automatically go through a sequence to properly shut down your Raspberry Pi. That's pretty much all there is to the physical aspect of the Pi station. So let's get this thing connected and boot it up. So RetroPie is amazing in the sense that almost any USB controller will either be semi-compatible or fully compatible. I personally use a hardwired Xbox One controller, but I've used the PS4 controller in the past with no issues. And there's actually another controller I'd highly recommend. It's called the Nest 30 Pro. It's made by 8BitDo. Uh, and I've got a picture showing right now so that way you can see exactly what it is. Uh, the Nest 30 Pro is the perfect button layout for RetroPie. Uh, it's an easy to set up Bluetooth uh, compatible controller uh, and that's a super nice feature so that way you don't have to mess around with any cables and you can actually set this specific controller up so that way it would be a dedicated Pi Station or RetroPie controller. Another thing that I recommend is having a keyboard accessible or plugged into the Pi. I use my wireless Microsoft keyboard but really any keyboard is fine. Uh, not all apps are compatible with the controller. So, there's, for example, Kodi, which is not compatible with either the Xbox or the PS4 controller, and you actually need to unplug them from the system in order to uh, function uh, the app properly. I've decided to use a pixel theme, um, so that's what you're actually seeing here, how it looks all pixelated. Uh, and there's a couple other cool themes, but I don't often recommend playing around with the themes too much. Some themes will not work and give you a white screen of death. Uh, if you have more than a handful of systems loaded, there's about three or four safe themes that, that'll work with a fully loaded console. Um, but I tend to stick with, uh, with the ones that I know work. Uh, I've made. I've also made some configuration changes that will allow some background music to be playing in the main menu and in the selected title landing page. Uh, the music is fully customizable and can actually be replaced with almost any other song or songs you like. If you want more than one song to play, what it'll do is it'll it'll just be like a CD player. You'll put in five uh, five MP3s into the folder and it'll just loop through them. 
So as you can see here, I've got a bunch of different consoles set up. Uh, I've got the Atari 2600, I've got Game Gear, I've got Game Boy, I've got Game Boy Advance, I've got Game Boy Color, MAME. MAME is uh, essentially it's an arcade emulator, so it'll play some of the games that weren't ever released on console and they were only in arcade machines. Uh, I've got the Sega Mega Drive, or better known as the Sega Genesis. I've got the Nintendo 64. I've got the original Nintendo, the NES. PC Engine is also known as Turbo Graphics. Uh, it's not a very well-known console, um, but it has a ton of really good games. And then there's something called Ports. We'll get back to that, but that's essentially uh, where you would be able to load into Kodi, and you can actually use this for streaming video and, and that type of thing. Uh, and then the one that a lot of people are very excited about is PlayStation. Um, PlayStation didn't run well on some of the older Pies because they weren't powerful enough, um, but the Pi 3 can run PlayStation really, really well. RetroPie is just their navigation. You go in there and you can set up your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi and all of those types of things. It's just a, essentially it's a menu. And then the Super Nintendo is the last system that I have personally put on it. There are a ton of other systems you can put on from the Atari 5200 and 7800, Intellivision, Nintendo DS, Neo Geo, and Neo Geo Pocket. You can even get PSP or Sega Saturn, Sega CD, Virtual Boy. There are so many other systems that you can actually use and connect to it. It's, uh, it's quite, quite an awesome software. So I'm going to show you guys some in-game footage so you can see how clean the emulation is uh, in most cases. We'll talk a little bit about that when we go to the N64 section, but uh, in most cases it is very clean and clear. So we'll go in and we'll load up Super Mario World 2. So there's that. If you press start and select at the same time within any game or any emulator, it'll automatically kick you right back um, to the selected title menu. So I'll show you guys the Nintendo 64 now. So we'll load up Banjo Kazooie. Right here, if you press the A button on that screen, it'll actually pull up uh, a spot where you can adjust. Um, things like what emulator you're using for that ROM, what emulator you're using as a default for all N64 consoles, um, and then it can also adjust things like the video output and what the resolution is and that type of thing. So this is going to be helpful so that way, as you can see, there's quite a few different um, N64 emulators. This is helpful so that way you can actually find the best emulator for your ROM. Now, keep in mind that not all ROMs run properly, um, specifically N64. So some games, they just they just won't work, but um, there is usually a way to make most work. So that's that, and then I'll show you guys some PlayStation 1. So a lot of crash here. And that's pretty much it. Just wanted to thank you guys for watching and be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more info or to see some of the other projects that we're working on or even the game that we're currently developing. If you have any questions or want to learn more, leave a comment below or you can find us on Facebook. I'll post a link to our page in the video description. Thanks again for watching, guys.